So we've covered the central executive or the boss of working memory. I have to smile when I say the boss. Having spent 23 years in New Jersey, there's only one boss, Bruce Springsteen, but that's not the central executive. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's shift now to the phonological loop or in deaf people, it's the sign loop. What happens in the phonological or sign loop? Well, speech is processed. Some sounds maybe. Let's start with a phonological loop. It's got two parts. One part's called the phonological store. And that is a store that briefly holds or stores uh, speech sounds. The second part of the phonological loop is the articulatory control mechanism. And basically what this mechanism does is repeat information for as long as you need it. So you may have had the experience where you had to remember somebody's name. What do you do? You quietly say to yourself, Maggie Schifferar, Maggie Schifferar, Maggie Schifferar, Maggie Schifferar. That, saying that over and over again, you see the loop drawing there? Saying that over and over again keeps the information fresh in the phonological store. So the phonological store only keeps information for as long as it is being actively rehearsed. If it's not being repeated, it's gonna fall out of working memory. In deaf people, the sign loop is a visual mechanism. And what does it hold? Well, it holds signs, right? Hand shapes, hand orientation, location, hand movement. So it's signs instead of sounds. The articulatory control mechanism is the same, but instead of rehearsing sounds, you're rehearsing, you're doing a motor rehearsal, you're rehearsing signs with your hands. And as before, in order to keep signs fresh in the sign store, they need to be repeated over and over again in this articulatory control mechanism. All right, how did Badly test this um, proposed phonological or sign store? Well, Badly only tested the phonological store. The sign store has been tested beautifully by a professor at UC Santa Cruz named Meg Wilson, who's just fabulous. And we have articles in Canvas uh, on her work. Um, if you don't have access to Canvas, then Google Meg Wilson at UC Santa Cruz Department of Psychology. All right. What Badly did to establish the existence or support for the existence of the phonological loop was to do something called articulatory suppression. Have you ever seen someone say, no, I don't want to hear what you're saying. La 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 la. Okay, you can understand why they would plug their ears. They don't want to hear it. But why are they talking? Well, it turns out if you're talking at the same time that you're listening to someone else talk, your memory for what they're saying drops like a rock, okay? The same thing works with sign, by the way. If a deaf person is signing at the same time that they're trying to read someone else's signs, that creates a problem, it creates a conflict. All right, so let's test it. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to read to you a list of 10 words that I want you to remember, and then we're gonna use this as a baseline, okay? So if you are a hearing individual, please cover up the uh, captions at the bottom. Otherwise, this won't work. And I want you to get it, to understand it, because you'll remember it better. So this is a demonstration, the first part of a demonstration on articulatory suppression. All right, so I'm gonna read a list of 10 words and then you have to write down the list after I'm done. Here we go. Bronze, book, magazine, bike, copper, dress, copier, soda, shoe, rock. Write them down. Go ahead. Wait. Okay, before I give you the answer to that list, I'm gonna ask you to listen to another list. And again, you'll write that down once I'm done reading the list. But in the second list, 
what you're going to do while I'm reading the list is say the, 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 the whole time I'm reading the list. Now, if you are in a place where you can't say the, 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 the out loud, uh, then say it in your inner voice. You know, that voice, you don't have to actually talk to other people. You can say it in your head, that voice. I want you to say it in your head. Da, 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 da. All right, you ready? You guys ready? Okay, start. Do, do the thes, da, 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 da. Donkey, brick, keep doing the thes. Sp stick, blue, cycle, trick, wagon, Clue, clock, blimp, write them down. Just write down all the words I just said. Go ahead. All right. After you're done writing down the list, I want you to look at the slide up here and compare your performance, how many of the words you remembered in the two conditions. So count up the number of words you got, you correctly remembered from the first list, save that number, we'll use it again later, and then count up the number of words that you correctly remembered from the second list. Now most people remember more words from the first list than words from the second list. And why is that? Articulatory suppression decreases your ability to remember and work with information that you're hearing if you are simultaneously speaking. That's articulatory suppression. If your phonological loop is busy producing speech, then it's not available to understand other people's speech. Same thing holds for sign language. If you're signing, and your phonological, I'm sorry, and your sign loop is busy um, taking processing your signs, then it doesn't have the resources to process someone else's signs at the same time, and so memory drops. Okay. There's another phenomenon that is, is provides support for uh, Badley's model of working memory, and this is a similarity effect. In hearing people, it's harder to remember words that sound similar than it is to remember words that sound different. In deaf people, it's harder to remember words that have similar signs than it is to remember words that have different signs. Okay, so take your two lists, put them aside, don't throw them out for now, and I'm gonna read a third list of 10 words, and when I'm done, I want you to write those words down in the correct order, okay? or that ah, doesn't have to be in the correct order. Just do your best to write down the words, okay? You don't have to say the or anything, just listen to the words. Here we go. Gold, code, bold, hold, told, cold, mode, slowed, hope, toad. Write them down. Hit pause until you're done writing them down, and then come back. And you will find me, now that you've come back, asking, did you remember more words in the first list or this most recent third list? Most people remember more words from the first list because those words sounded different from, differently from one another, had a different sound from one another. The third list, the one we just said, there were a lot of words that sounded alike, and according to research, we have more trouble, hearing people have more trouble hearing words that sound alike, and deaf people have more trouble remembering words that have similar signs. So, actually, it's really interesting. The sign for deaf people, the instead of it being sound-based, right, it's motor-based, it's based on the movements, the actual movements of your hand, rather than the meaning or the semantics of the word. So we misremember words that are similar. 
Okay, another one. Here we go. There's a phenomenon that Badley found called the word length effect. And it turns out how many words we can remember depends on how long the words are. Uh, so we're going to do a fourth list. Li fourth list. Ready for this fourth list? So put your first three lists aside. Here comes a fourth list. You don't have to say anything or do anything. Just listen to me or uh, deaf viewers read the captions. Ready? Rhinoceros, zinc, gorilla, tuberculosis, measles, calcium, uranium, carbon, hippopotamus, mumps. Write them down. Hit pause till you're done. And when you come back, I'll ask you the same question again. Which list did you remember more words from? This most recent fourth list or the first list? Most people remember more words from the first list than from this most recent fourth list. So uh, recall decreases as the amount of time it takes you to say a word or to sign a word increases. And that's what's um, drawn on this uh, hard to read graph here. Um, but the line going down means that um, your memory drops as the time you need to say or sign words increases. This is called the word length effect. There's also uh, bilingual and multilingual people will be really interested in this. There's also something called a digit span. In some languages, words are can be said very quickly, and other languages um, require more time to say the same number. So um, let me let me pick uh, French and English. In English, if I want to say ninety, it's ninety. In French, it's four. 20 and 10. So I have to say 90. It takes me longer to say 90 than it takes me to say 90. So if I were doing a word length effect or a digit span, how many numbers can I remember? If I'm working in French, I won't be able to remember as many numbers as if I'm working in English. Yeah, the more time it takes you to say a word or to pronounce to say a number, the fewer numbers you can fit in your working memory, right? The less likely you are to remember any particular word or number. Okay, come back and we'll talk about the visual spatial sketch pad.